Sunrise Radio with me, Shabnam Sahi. It gives me great pleasure to say a big warm welcome to Professor Anil Malhotra, one of CRI's former research fellows, now based in Manchester, where he heads up a cardiac research and screening centre, looking after lots of premiership footballers amongst his many patients, but still finding the time to oversee community screenings for the general public on behalf of CRI. Professor Malhotra, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Shabnam. When and how did you first become involved with the charity Cardiac Risk in the Young? I'm, I'm originally from Manchester. Um, I trained down south in Cambridge and then cardiology training in Oxford. But I wanted to expand my horizons further. And when I heard about the Cardiac Risk in the Young Fellowship, I decided to apply back in 2013. And it was exciting to move to London and see a different population in terms of backgrounds and cultures and, of course, a wide range of medical conditions that I otherwise wouldn't have been exposed to. So I started in 2013 and I finished my PhD three years later Mm. and I enjoyed working with Christ so much that I transferred the rest of my cardiology training to St. George's Hospital in London. Why did you decide to specialise in hereditary congenital heart conditions affecting young people and athletes? Well, I think originally I was on rotation as a junior registrar at Wickham as part of the Oxford Rotations and an 18-year-old student came in extremely short of breath And he was diagnosed with heart failure, which was a real shock for me because I didn't think that people so young could be affected. Hmm. And we treated him quickly at the time. He ended up being transferred to one of the larger centres for further assessment, including a heart transplant. And then I read up a bit more about these conditions, and I suppose that led me to come across CRIES, my fellowship. And I thought this branch of cardiology is different, it's specialist, it's in young people, and it's understudied. And that's when I thought, you know what, I really want to learn more and research more about this particular area. Hmm. I understand you're now based in Manchester. How important do you think it is to have regional centres of excellence diagnosing and treating young people with heart conditions? That's right. I moved to Manchester two years ago now and run an inherited heart and sports cardiology NHS clinic within Shaw Hospital and Manchester Royal Infirmary. And as you mentioned, I work with a number of leading sports teams, including Manchester City and Manchester United, for instance, and British Cycling. Hmm. But there's a vast opportunity um, outside London. And CRI has been fundamental in training fellows throughout their research programmes, who then go on to various regions across the UK, be it Birmingham, Leicester or Wales. But I'm enjoying developing Manchester as a northern referral centre for many community screenings that happen outside London. Hmm. And also, I'm originally from Manchester. It's a sporting city, and my wife's from here too, so it was nice from a family perspective as well to come back home. So everyone was happy. I can imagine. Now, yeah. Professor Malhotra, as you pointed out yourself, heart condition is not something one would immediately associate with young people. So can you explain to us why it is important for young people to have their hearts screened in the first place? Yeah, well, well Shabnam, firstly, inherited conditions are relatively common, um, as common as one in 300 hmm. amongst young people aged just 14 to 35 years. So they are quite common. And we know that those who have a condition are at an increased risk of sudden cardiac arrest, particularly when associated with factors such as intense exercise, for instance. So firstly, it's important to identify these people and then manage and tailor their lifestyles and start medications, example, for when when that's appropriate. And in more advanced cases, you know, we can put in pacemakers or put them forward for curative procedures, such as surgeries. The majority, i.e. 80% of people with these conditions, don't have symptoms until the sudden cardiac arrest itself. Hmm. So that really does strengthen the argument to actively go looking for these conditions. And finally, there's a genetic trait with many conditions. Um, So these benefits extend to family members as well. We are an Asian station. We are the heartbeat, if you like, of the British Asian community in the UK. So let's talk about the BAME community. Are young people from a BAME background more susceptible to heart conditions? Do you think awareness could be better amongst our British Asian community? Well, inherited cardiac conditions can affect everyone, be it males, females, Asians, black or white. But we do know that it's underreported in Asian and black communities and more should be done to bring these cases forward. And hence, it's really good to see Sunrise Radio collaborating with Cardiac Risk in the Young like this. Hmm. But we also know that in older age, I in, in mid-30s and 40s and 50s, British Asians are more susceptible to heart disease and therefore care should be taken to look out for risk factors like blood pressure and cholesterol, which is a particular problem for us Asians. 
But essentially, if you have symptoms, and I mean chest pain, shortness of breath, or loss of consciousness, then you, sh- then you certainly should seek medical advice because these sorts of conditions are underreported and, and, and our community may be a bit hesitant in presenting with these symptoms. So what happens once you've been diagnosed with a serious heart condition? Is it possible for athletes and sporty young people, for example, to lead a normal life? Yeah, very much so. Um, If we know about the condition, we can then manage it accordingly. Now, there are guidelines and recommendations from scientific bodies that we follow as well. But, of course, in severe cases, one may have to give up competitive sport. But in the vast majority of cases, people with the condition go on to lead completely normal lives. And, in fact, my own PhD work showed that amongst professional footballers diagnosed with a condition through screening, 75% of them return to play competitively, Mm. which is an excellent outcome. And at least we know of a problem and we can manage it thereafter. And and that too in other affected family members as well. Now, Sunrise Radio is naturally delighted that Cry is our charity partner again this year. Do you have a message that you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, I think think it's an excellent initiative that really does make a difference to our Asian communities across the country. Cry is a charitable organisation close to my heart, given my long-standing affiliation with them as discussed. And likewise, Sunrise Radio is an institution in itself. It's a station that I grew up listening to and one that spans the generations of my parents and now my children too. Mm. We subject them to that in the car. Mm. But, um, I, I, but I would advise anyone who is keen to be screened to visit Cry's website at testmyheart.org.uk. You can book themselves on to have an ECG, which is an electrical tracing of the heart. It's non-invasive, it's free, it doesn't hurt, and it only takes a few minutes, and it's a very worthwhile few minutes for you and potentially your family. I was in conversation with Professor Anil Malhotra, one of Cry's former research fellows, now based in Manchester, where he heads up a cardiac research and screening centre. As we mentioned before, he looks after lots of premiership footballers amongst his many patients, but he still finds the time to oversee community screenings for the general public on behalf of Cry. Professor Malhotra, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Shubman. Thank you. Sunrise Radio.